Here is the user's guide for switches. Here is a circuit with a switch. Let's look at the input mask. Let's focus first on these inputs here. So this is the initial condition of the switch, close or open. And here you can input after how many seconds. In this case, I want to have 10 milliseconds after start of the simulation, the switch shall change the condition. So here I want to open it after 10 milliseconds. Let's see what happens now. Here you can see this is the current. The current is interrupted after 10 milliseconds. In reality, however, the current would not be interrupted like this. The current would be interrupted even if the contacts of the switches are open only after the next current zero. We can simulate such a thing as well. So let's go there again. We close and then we ask the switch to open only after current zero. So the contact separation would be after 10 milliseconds. And however, even the contacts would be open current would continue to flow until current zero. Let's see how this looks like. Yes, you can see now the contacts are still opened here, but the current continues to flow until current zero. I can also ask the breaker to break down at a certain threshold, at a certain voltage. So let's see, breaker would be open to start with, initial condition, and then I would ask the breaker to break down at five kilovolts. So here I am then I need to make sure that I have a sinus and not a cosine at the beginning. So I would start with minus 90 degrees. And I would also look at the voltage. Yes, here it is. Okay, let's see what happens now. You see the switch breaks down now at 5 kilovolts. And from then I have a current flowing. Here I can define uh, the recovery characteristic of the breaker. This is a dry recovery, that means uh, without any plasma remaining between the contacts. So here I would say that uh, I have a recovery voltage of 2 kilovolts per millisecond. After contact separation, therefore, if uh, my contact separation is 5 milliseconds before the current interruption, so it would be 5 times 2 kilovolts. Let's see how this looks like now. 0 0.005. So I would have a break closed at the at the beginning of the calculation, and I would open the contacts after five milliseconds, but still current would continue to flow. And then I would expect uh, a recovery voltage, and there I would have a breakdown again as soon as these conditions here are met. Let's see how this would look like now. So you see, I have contact separation after five milliseconds. And from there on, I have a recovery characteristic of the breaker. And as soon as the, the current is interrupted, I have my recovery voltage. And at this point, I have a breakdown again. And this continues like this. So. The three phase breaker works the same way. Uh, I just have three phases and each one of the phases works after fulfilling all these conditions here. So I can just pick an example. I would like to open the interrupt current after, uh, let's say, 10 milliseconds after initiation. And I would like to see the current and the recovery voltage. The breaker would be closed, so let's see. You see, current would be interrupted here, first phase, second phase, third phase. I can also open and close the breaker uh, during continuous mode. Instead of manipulating the breaker myself, I can also change it and put in a random switch. This is the switch with such a clock sign here. Here is the input mask for the random switch. Uh, again, here the same thing as before. Here I can ask uh, how many seconds should I change the random open or close trigger. Let's say I want to have it every, every two seconds. Every two seconds I want to have a random decision if the breaker should open or stay closed or vice versa. So let's see how this looks like now. Every second second. See, it 
This function can be used, for example, to simulate uh, changing grid conditions, such as uh, connecting or disconnecting a line or a load, and to see how the whole system reacts to such an abrupt uh, change.